Hi, I'm Rowan Langley. I'm in the mid realm. Um, for knot work, you need for easy knot work, we're going to start with graph paper. At the end of this class, I'm going to show you how to make your own graph paper uh, using an Ames guide. You see that? Ames guide and a T square, which I didn't want everybody to go out and um, purchase here, T square. This is a short one. Uh, you want to get one with a flat edge so that your Ames guide can I'll tell you how to uh, work the Ames guide. Um, a beautiful thing is a battery operated uh, pencil sharpener, and these are new. You can actually change from battery. And if your batteries wear out, you can change it to manual. So they're great. So here's your graph paper. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna make dots on every other line. So <clears throat> I have them all made up, but can you, okay, you can see me. So you make little dots with your pencil. I'm using a pen. So you'll have to excuse me. You're gonna make little dots all over. Um, and I'll, I'll give you a, uh, what I want your sheet to look like, because I don't know if people have more than one piece of graph paper or, or many pieces. So um, this is how I grid your sheets. And I'm gonna go through each grid. So the first grid is gonna be in your upper left-hand corner. This is so you don't waste graph paper. <clears throat> So these are your dots, your basic dots after you have your, it lined up on your uh, screen and you're, you're going to be doing your own uh, personal uh, knot work on your piece of work. So you have primary dots. If you can see there are every other, do I need to bring the camera closer? Or is this good? Oh, wait a minute. This is turned around. How's that? Can you guys see that? Yeah, now it's oriented. That's good. <laughs> it's almost out of, hold on a minute. There we go. Okay. So if you want to, um, these are called primary dots. And that's where you start off with is your primary dots. So you're going to make a small grid with primary dots. See, so here's Every other line you're going to dot. Any questions? <laughs> it looks like, um, okay. So, does everybody have it dotted? This is a one, two, three, four, five by four. The next one is whoops, page out of order. I thought I had these all in order. Sorry about that. The next one is secondary dots. I did them in red. <clears throat> I'm really glad I did it in marker because <laughs> you'll see mistakes that I made. I can't erase them. So, you know, I also make mistakes. It's why you do everything in pencil. And I have a beautiful eraser. Uh, I love Sanford's Magic Rub. That's the best eraser. And what I do is I cut it in half. So now I have two erasers to use up. Um, so if you make a mistake, so you have primary dots over primary dots, and then you're going to put secondary dots. It's going to cross over. If you cross, if you make, you know, a visual cross in your head and you cross it, that Secondary dot should be right in the middle of the X. <clears throat> Any questions? So since you have graph paper, you don't need to make these X's and you just, the uh, secondary dots are between all the primaries. And the bigger the piece, the more your eyes kind of get screwy but then you can kind of zone out with some celtic music and just keep going if it's a large piece <laughs> any questions on the secondary dots so your piece should look like this 
primary dots, secondary dots. Okay, so this is a larger piece, just to show you um, a, large, a, a, a little larger section. Primary dots, secondary dots. If, as you see, they're evenly spaced. Because if they're not even, your uh, um, picture, your lines are gonna go messed up and then you have to fix them. And you're gonna have to do that anyway, um, even I do. So this is the grid paper that I wanted you to start with. And this is a three by three grid with secondary dots. Everybody see that? So I just want you to make that grid up there. <clears throat> now, once you make that grid up there, you're gonna start and you can start anywhere you want, okay? You just have to realize when you start where you start, this is a five below by five below grid. This is grid one, three by three dots. Um, you're going to go in front of the dots. It's just like connect the dots, except you're not connecting the dots. You're going in front of the dots. All right. So you're going to go primary to a secondary dot. See that first one? Questions? Okay, and your second um, weave, your second line will be secondary to primary. Everybody have that? Usually I have a class and I go around and check, make it sure everybody's doing fine. <clears throat> then you can do it this way. You can cross and start your weave. So you just cross over and that's secondary to primary, the other direction. What I should do is hide that. Okay, everybody draw that. Or you can go, I did this primary to secondary. So this goes primary to secondary because on the same row, it's the same stroke. Primary to secondary, primary to secondary. And this second one is, as you see, it's the same line that they come out with. So now you have, you can do it this way and just all the ones on this are the same. You will eventually wind up with this. when you're crossing over and doing your weave. Questions? <clears throat> you always wanna leave the ends and the corners empty because that's what messes a lot of people up. They're, they're doing, and you'll see some of my mistakes too, because I got messed up too, because I like, you'll see it. Um, okay, so if you're here, then we're going to start in the corners. And you want to start, I start on the inside corner, because I can see where that's going. So you want to meet this line, see this line, with this line and curve around. I'm pausing to leave you space to, <laughs> to do this. And it's easier for me to show it like this than try to do it manually, plus look at you and see if there's any questions. The next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna take this line and this, the corner lines can be done different ways. Um, you do the inside, then you do the outside. And since I don't have my specialty classes on, I sort of miss a lot of the outside ones. And you wanna connect, curve it around and send it back down. Cause these can be rounded or they can be squared off like, like this one. So <clears throat> this is your completed knot that you everybody should have. And I put in purple, 
uh, I don't know if you can see the dots, but I put in purple dots. This is your connector to this line. It connects. This connects to this line. It connects. Everything connects. And if you notice, you have two links. I mean, this is your basic square. So if we go back to this one, everybody should look like this. And just say, if anybody has questions, you can unmute yourself to ask and then mute yourself yeah. when you're done, which will make sure I'll that they- questions. Anytime yeah. I stop talking, like just pipe up if you have a question. Did everybody get to this? To this figure? Hopefully. <laughs> All right. You guys ready to go on? Hang on, that inner corner goes around the primer, the secondary circle. Which inner corner? Yeah. <clears throat> the inner corner will go around the secondary. Here. The secondary dot. That you Boy, that really your your mouth really does make it much easier. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I tried holding this up, and we couldn't even see the. I, I, you'd miss everything. And see, you you wind up with that. And I have the line showing where they're supposed to go. And then I have the clear picture of you should end up with this. Everybody good? Someone asked in the uh, chat if you can get closer to a section that's like Basically, the whole the, the distance from the phone is showing us the whole sheet at once. Yeah, there you go, right there. That's that's what you it. should end up with. I'm I'm holding this up. <laughs> yeah, I, I can tell, but that that was that that's good. It's still nice and clear. Maybe work on it and then zoom it and basically then lift it up when you have a finished thing to show. Should be good. Okay. Anybody want to see any of these? Of how you get to the end product? I'll just, God, that's, that's hard to do. Which way am I going? Here you go. Is that better for people? For any of the folks who asked, chime in. Yes. Okay. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> uh, now we're going to go to do grid two, which is your curves on the outside. And it takes practice. Don't expect to get it. And even with my practice, like I goof up um, as the end product. This is going to be your end product. Yep. So with this, also, any place you want to start. You just have to keep going from the place where you started. Oops. Here's the, here's the grid. And here's the second. I decided to start in the middle. And then the third is my weave. And this is all rough hand. So when you get time, when, <clears throat> when you line it, I use a ruler, a very straight ruler, and they're hard to find. Um, because if you, if you look at the edges, where am I? If you look at the edges of this, this is straight, but this is like 30 years old. Um, the new ones, the metal is crooked and you have to go through like 
50 of them sometimes to find a metal piece that's straight. So when you're lining, <clears throat> and after you line a certain section and you're finished with it, you erase everything. You erase all the pencil marks. So here's grid two. And then this is me completing, whoop, God, I can't get the right angle. Completing the inside. All you have to do is weave. It's like weaving a basket. And you're gonna leave the outside again and uh, the corner work open. So what I like to do is I like to do the corners first. And you can actually see once the corners are done, you can actually see where the line is going and you can see the curvature of the line. Can everybody see that? Say yes or no. Yes. Okay, and then I do, I finish, as you see, I made a mistake again. See right down here. And up here, I missed the line. I didn't leave it open. <clears throat> but I'm doing it in marker so I can't erase it <laughs> where you can. So then you have a completed, you have a, your completed um, knot work right here. Questions? And as I said, it takes practice to get those um, edges done correctly. I want to back up on your, when you're first starting, you make your first line, like from a secondary to primary and the match secondary to primary. I, I do. And now the, and then you jump a space. Okay. Yes, you jump, you, you jump dots. So this okay. is secondary to primary, and you jump, and this would be secondary to primary. Well, if you're on the same row, where would the next one going from the lower left to the upper right go? Okay, so if you're on the same row, in this one, see the secondary I'm pointing at? Yeah. You do secondary to primary just like this one is on the inside. So the, like if you do the left to the right on the outside of one set, you would jump over a whole nother set and do it on the inside. Okay. Let me, can you see me? Okay. Yeah. So if I was here and I wanted to do more, I know that this one has to go this way. And then since this is on this one, on the inside, this would have to go this way. Lift it up, please. Ah, that's what I did wrong. I can't find it. <laughs> it's hard trying to find the camera on this phone. So the ones I added are in black. Yeah, I see that. Okay. Got it. Now I got it. Okay. Thank you. Okay. And you can actually see the edge starting to form around, but you want to leave space. That's just to get your, um, the width of the knot going. Any other questions? And what are you looking at? <laughs> I need to point this someplace else. Anybody have no other questions? We'll go on to um, grid three. Grid three, <clears throat> two primary dots. Uh, that's the second row down. Oh, let me get the... Here's the original. 
Oops, the original. So grid three, you're gonna do this. It's gonna just be two dots on the primary, going down one, two, three, four, five times, skipping. Everybody see that? And one dot in the middle on the secondary. This is what I call my rope pattern or the rope pattern. It's lest you make a twist or a rope going down your scroll or anywhere you want to. Everyone okay with that? Everybody grid on that? <clears throat> so with the rope pattern, you know what I'm gonna do? Okay, there. You can't see that, can you? you st I start near the top on the ropes. You really don't wanna start at the bottom of the ropes. So see that? I'll go to primary to secondary, and then the secondary to primary. Everyone see that? It's below the edge. The second one I do is I know this is going to turn around on the top. Because I don't have another, another um, what they call, sometimes they call it tertiary, which is the design. So <clears throat> I know it's gonna curve around the top. So once I have that curve going, I know I can curve around on that secondary loop, that secondary dot right there. Everybody see that? So you're going from this, whoop. I need to bring that down. You're going from this, and then taking the inside circle, circling around the secondary. And then you're gonna bring the other length. Everybody see that? Questions? Now, this can be either the squared off like I have it or rounded. Oops, I keep going up too far. Everybody have that? Then what you're gonna do is you're gonna twist around and form curves. See that? You're going to form curves. And this all take this takes practice. Think of a roller coaster or something like that. You know, you're going to go up and you're going to curve around, you're going to come back down and just curve around. <clears throat> Sometimes you need to um, keep these lines. Make sure this line meets this line. And this line meets this line. You can see I made a little mistake here. These lines meet. Um, you can also hook and drag it down. It's like a little hook around the secondary knot. And the second picture, and the last picture is the knot completed. And once again, they can either be square on top or they can be rounded on top, your ropes, depending upon what you're using it for. <laughs> Questions? Nope, no questions? All right, is everybody ready to go on to part two? And we lost four minutes, so <clears throat> I might not have you do the work on part two, but uh, just 
just one little lock on part two. <clears throat> All right. <clears throat> so I graded this out. You, you have a few basic medieval blocks. Your best one is just your single line. That can go on a secondary or it can go on a primary line. Uh, the next is a T. A T, some people call it a cross block. Um, the next are like L's. If you, you want that little circular or a skinny line going around, usually they, they come in two and um, they come one pair and you have the thick lines. But if you put one outside, you have a thin line going around into your piece. So you can do the L's any way you want to. You can do it long and short. You could do it long, long, you know, it, whatever you want to. And these are your three basic blocks, but they look very different. So what I want you to do is do a four by four. And this is a fun little exercise. Do a four by four. That means four primaries up and down or side. And then do your secondaries, which would be three. And so what I would like you to do is you're going to use this. And I want you to put a T from the first secondary in the middle all the way down to the last secondary in the middle. And then you're going to put the crossbar of the T from side to side in the middle. And it should look like There's, there's the cross, hold on a minute. Did I do this right? Four by four? Yeah, okay. <clears throat> it should look like this. I think this mi minus, whoops. This one's on the primaries. That's a five by five. Yeah, that's a five by five. I'm sorry. Here, let me go back to the four by four. Um, <clears throat> I was gonna surprise you on what you're gonna wind up with the four by four. Just use a four by four. Do I have a blank four by four? I got a three by three. I don't have a blank four by four. But you're going to make a, a square like uh, one, two, three, four. And having music on kind of relieves you of the tedium of doing this. I don't find it tedious, but okay. So here's, here's your graph, if you can see it. See it? And what you're gonna do is in the middle, you're gonna make your, your T. Everybody got that? Okay. <clears throat> then, uh, 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 uh. I mess up my pages. It's a box. I don't have this blocked out. Um, I have a three by three blocked out for you. I don't have the four by four blocked out. Um, <clears throat> so what you're gonna do on the four by four, let me find another color pen, is you're going to this one, since it's so tiny, you're gonna to have to do the weave. Do the weave first, okay? Everybody see that? 
leave the outsides empty. And I'm doing this fast, so. Um, okay, that weave, that weave. Can you see the blue that I'm doing? Or do I need to use a marker? We can see it. Okay. And you have the top part, you turn, you go around the inside. And then you go around the outside. Inside, outside. Inside, outside. Yeah, see, I have this wrong too. <clears throat> Because this actually should be you have that hook there. When you get to an edge, it's just like a block. You're gonna have a little ring. And again, you have a ring, you can make it perfectly circled. You don't have to have it squared, you can circle it off. Here, I'll show you how to circle. I circled that one. Now you can do the whole thing. And you should come up with this. So with that little T, you now have four connecting circles within a large circle, four square. Am I the only one seeing chain mail? Could just yeah. be me. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, um, yeah, that's a chain mail is links. <laughs> Some of it. <clears throat> and tada, isn't that a pretty design for your new next scroll? And this again can be added. You just double it, going all the way up. Um, I'm not going to go through doubling. I think I'm almost out. Of, oh no, I'm not over. It's out of time. Okay. I wanted you've, you to. Do, hmm? You've got a little less than 15 minutes left, but you do have time. Okay. Has everybody finished this? Nope, somebody's still working. Okay, everybody? Yeah? Okay. Um, so make a grid three by three, which would look like this. Three primaries, two secondaries. I should have probably started with you on that. <clears throat> then you're gonna do a simple line block. One line, one block. And it's going to go, because uh, I have to do this backwards. It's going to go on the bottom secondaries. See the purple? Uh, 
and then start your grid above that line. Start your design above that line. So here's two. See what I'm doing? There's three. My phone has a delay on it, so. Everybody see that? So you curve around on top, taking your thread back up, which leaves the other two threads only one place to go and it's straight across the bottom. Everyone have that? And then all you need to do is finish off your knot. And this is called a foundation knot. Ah. I can't, why isn't this coming up? There you go. That's what your knot should look like. I'm going the wrong way. That's your end knot. So using even just those three knot uh, blocks, you can do myriad tons of different designs just using those blocks. And it's fun because then you get to twist your thing around. You do want to um, try to be symmetrical on your, your blocks and you not, if, it's, if it's a long sheet, um, if you want to use one, um, usually it's symmetrical across from each other, like on the edges, like on the edges like this. Then you'll get the same pattern on all four sides. If you want that, you can do whatever you want. They did. All right. <clears throat> so I got what, 10 minutes? Or less? Five. Five. No. Okay. So I'm going to go back to the Amy's guide. Any questions on blocking or not work? Anybody have anything? Nothing? All right. Usually I have a board and I, I have a board and I tape down paper when I'm doing my own um, gridding, my own on, on my scroll, all right? I'll have it taped down because it's going to move on you and you want it taped. Um, and I actually went to the framers and got uh, fiberglass sheets that are, usually pretty accurate, um, but you can use anything. You just want something that the T-square will clip onto. Oops, there, T-square. Fortunately, I have a blue one. Oops, orient. Okay, so this is your Ames guide. If you can find one, they're like three bucks. Okay, but a lot of people don't know how to use them. These are- How is that spelled, A-I? A-M-E-S. Thank you. You're welcome. It's, you know, Michael's usually has them or um, Hobby Lobby, your art stores. <clears throat> I used to have a ton of them and when I taught this, I. I used to give them away because they were only $2 back then. <laughs> so this is, um, you can make your squares bigger or smaller, or you can use the same thing to make lines on your scroll instead of using the ruler and the dot method. 
you want to have a flat edge. I don't know if you can see it's flat here. So the Ames guide can go up and down. So if it's taped square on one side, your Ames guide should be fine and your lines should not be squiggled. So let me see if I can do this backwards, <clears throat> upside down. So again, I'll show you how it works. You hold your bottom of your hand, the bottom of your hand like this. I don't know if you can see it. You hold it down on the Ames guide and then you stick the pa paper in. I'm doing this backwards because usually, maybe this way, this way might be better for me. Okay, can you still see it? So you go through one hole and you slide it over. I'm just going to jump um, hole so you can see this better. So this is jumping a hole. See how it makes nice lines? Ta-da. Okay. It makes your lines and it can make your calligraphy lines too. Now your calligraphy lines, <clears throat> the center is a circle that you can turn around. Gosh, you can't see it, hold on. Center is a circle. You, you can turn the circle around and you could get thin lines. You can get fat lines. <laughs> um, but <clears throat> this is, this, the one, two, three, four, five, and then, and a space and another one, that's your musical staff lines. So <gasps> you're making music and you wanna do your lines Perfect. yourself. These are your, you want me to show you? Hold on a minute. That's, let me, let me put it this way, up and down so you can see it better. Come on. And then you have a space skipped for your next staff. The one that went, <laughs> okay. I'm so happy because I was sitting here going, oh, I guess I need to order a pad for grids. And while I'm at it, I should order some music notes. <laughs> now I don't have to. Okay, the next one in from the music staff. Yeah, because if you make one page, then you can copy it on it, copy it. Um, let me get some fresh paper. Whoops, I had fresh paper here. Oh, there it is. Excuse me. Okay. So you have your basic, you have your basic, you have your music staff. And this one, for those who like, Okay, this is not going to be too even because it's not, it's not taped down. This one is, you'll see this, hold on, one. Some people like to, um, it's this pattern. Some people like to have larger um, stabs and smaller stabs. Can you see that? No, you can't. That's what this one does. So you see your, your lining for your lettering and your uh, ascenders and descenders on your lettering. I'm getting away from doing graphs, but um, okay. So <clears throat> going back to graphs, so we don't run out of time. We have these lines that I did. That'll do. So then you perpendicular to the lines you did for your graph paper. Wait, I skipped every one, right? So I'm skipping every one on this one. I don't have my glasses on, so if I miss one, then I miss one. 
can always go back. <clears throat> now you have perfectly even graph paper. See that? And that's how you will be graphing your scroll. Sweet. Uh, hmm? Sweet, I love it. Oh, good. <laughs> Who's saying that? Okay. Don't, don't have my camera on. That's okay. So um, that's how you be graphing your scroll. Now, this is very large. I sometimes go very, very, very tiny. <clears throat> and your AIMS guide will let you go large, will let you go tiny, and it's just fun to play around with. So are there any questions on how to grid on your work of art and how to do um, not work, your basic not work? Two minute warning. <laughs> no comments, no nothing. Love the class, so helpful. <laughs> well, I'm glad. It made a lot of sense, thank you. Carolyn, was that you? <laughs> you. I still have my AIMS guide from college drafting. <laughs> now you know you can use it several different ways. I, the, yeah. the, the music, file. the music okay. staff one, the music staff one. I never thought about and didn't know. Oh really? I'd only ever used it for technical. <laughs> yeah. Now I know. Well, I, Rowan and I have been friends a really, really long time, and she's amazing at all this stuff. But I can make my own music sheet stuff now a lot easier. I love it. Love it. Love it. I, I thank you. And I'm visiting from another kingdom. So thank you okay. very much. OK, everyone, I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording. And okay. there's five minutes to the next class. Thank you so much, Rowan. You're welcome. It was a pleasure teaching you.